Hello, in this video I'm going to go through what needs to be done to remove that F5 fault from a Glowworm HXI boiler. Now the F5 fault is an overheat problem, so for some reason your boiler has overheated and it's tripped itself out for safety. And I'm going to go through what I have to do to reset the boiler. I'm also going to go through possible causes on the system which may have caused the fault, and then what I can do to try and remove that fault. And finally, this may help the engineers. I'm going to range rate the boiler, which means I'm going to reduce its power to try and stop this boiler from tripping out. And stick around to the end where I go for the best settings for the thermostat on the front of your boiler. Now here comes the disclaimer. Unfortunately, only gas engineers should be fixing this fault because to fix this fault, I need to go to the combustion area of the boiler. And legally, only gas registered engineers should be going to this part of the boiler. So I've left links to the gas register in the description below. So I take no responsibility for any actions that you may take. My name is Mark Ballard and I've been a gas registered engineer for over 20 years. The aim of my channel is to help you with your central heating and your plumbing. If you find this video helpful in any way, then please give me some feedback by clicking on that thumbs up and that will also help others to find the video. If you think this video is useful, then click on that subscribe. And if you want to receive a notification the next time I upload a help video, then click on that bell. And of course, share the video with your friends. And I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's left a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it helped me to make more videos which will hopefully help you. Right, now let's get on with the video. All the links throughout this video can be found in the description below, at the end of the video or in the cards above. So here's the boiler and as you can see, there is F5 flashing in the display. When we look at what the boiler is, this is a Glowworm 18 HXI. So this is a heat only boiler. Just a quick note, if your boiler doesn't look exactly the same as this, but you have the F5 fault, then you should have a reset button on the front of your boiler. Whereas this boiler doesn't have that option. But keep watching the video because the causes of the F5 will still be the same. You can see that I have my control selected and the hot water is turned on and also the central heating is turned on. So the controls are telling the boiler to come on. Now it makes no difference at all if I turn the thermostat up or down. That's going to make no difference at all. And it's also going to make no difference if I turn the boiler off. So you can see I've turned it off. Everything's off now. And when I turn it back on, you'll hear the boiler makes a little noise. And then after a short while, the F5 will return again. So the boiler now is going for its pre-ignition checks. And there we go. There's the F5 come back again, flashing in the display. Now, if we look in the book, you'll see that the F5 is an overheat fault. Reading through the possible causes, overheat stat operated, maximum temperature exceeded, check thermistor connections, air in system with thermistor acts maximum setting, faulty overheat stack connection. And finally, check that the pump is wired into the appliance, not from the programmer. This would cause a no pump overrun. And as I've said before, these are only guides. They just point you in the direction that you may find the fault. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is check the overheat thermostat because 99% of the time that is what the fault is going to be. Now, to do this, I need to remove the front cover by undoing these two screws. These boilers were only manufactured from 2003 to 2007. So there's only four years of manufacture before they changed the design and they removed this thermostat from the boiler. Now this F5 fault is a real pain in the neck because it doesn't take a lot to reset it, but you the customer should not be resetting this. So an engineer needs to be called and these boilers are getting older now. And so this is happening more and more, but there are a few things I can do to try to reduce this. So this fault is less likely to occur. And I'll go through those after I've reset the overheat thermostat. I now need to remove the combustion chamber burner cover. Now you can only do this if you are a gas registered engineer, because once you remove this cover, it will affect how the boiler will operate. A gas registered engineer knows the implications and the dangers of removing this cover. Now I've removed the two screws holding on the burner cover. I'll now remove it. That will then give me access to the heat exchanger, the gas valve, the fan, the ignition system, and also that overheat thermostat. I will find the overheat thermostat in the top left hand corner of the boiler and it's clipped onto the flow pipe from the heat exchanger. 
Now this is a manual reset thermostat and on the later Ecotech boilers, they changed this to an overheat thermostat with no manual reset. So that did away with the problem altogether. Although this thermostat can be a very annoying and keep tripping out, it is a critical part of your boiler and it must not be tampered with in any way at all because it is a safety device and it is there for a reason. And as the name implies, it is an overheat thermostat. If you didn't have this overheat thermostat, the boiler has no control on how hot it could possibly get. So if for some reason there was a fault, the boiler would keep on running and basically just get hotter and hotter and hotter. And it could just literally catch fire and burn itself out. And that is why all modern boilers have overheat thermostats of some description. Now here is the overheat thermostat and in between the two electrical plugs is a little red button. And when the boiler reaches 95 degrees, that is almost boiling, the button will pop out for safety and switch off your boiler, giving you an F5 fault. To reset the boiler, all I need to do is to push the button back in again. And when I do that, I will hear a little click as it goes down. Now I've used a pencil to do this just to make it easier to see. The connections are low voltage, but I'm happy in not going near them. Now I'm gonna go back down to the control panel where I can see F5 is still flashing. I'm then gonna turn the boiler off, then I'll wait a few seconds, then turn it back on again. I still have my controls set to on. I hear a click from the relay on the circuit board. Then the fan starts running, gas valve open, ignition. And there we go, the boiler is now back up and running again. You can see the flame in the little viewing window here. And the temperature is now steadily rising on the display. I can now just test the boiler's working okay by just turning off the controls. So I'm gonna turn off the central heating and I'm gonna turn off the hot water. I'll then see the boiler will then turn itself off. And now the green light has gone out, that means the boiler has now turned itself off and we can see the temperature is now dropping down. If I put the heating back on again, we should then see the boiler start back up again. So I'm just gonna select central heating, and now I've gotta wait a few seconds for the zone valve to open up. As I know this system has zone valves, one for the hot water and one for the central heating. And there we go, the boiler started back up and I know the boiler has lit because the green light has come on. The green light indicates that the burner is now lit. But now we need to consider what caused the boiler to overheat in the first place. Now this is the main heat exchanger. If I listen to this boiler, I can hear that it is starting to kettle. Kettling is when the water inside the boiler starts to boil. Exactly the same as your kettle when that starts to boil. Kettling sounds like this. This is happening because the water is not flowing through the heat exchanger fast enough. And also if it stops altogether, your boiler will overheat virtually straight away and pop out that thermostat. Now the question is, why is the water not flowing through it fast enough? Now there are several things I can check and adjust and I'm gonna go through those now. One of the first things I'm gonna do is just listen to the boiler, see how it sounds. If I think I can hear air trickling around, I'm gonna go and check in the loft tank, make sure that's got water in it. If you have a sealed system, make sure that there is plenty of pressure between one and 1.5 bar. A very common cause is if radiator valves are closed right down or virtually closed. That restricts the flow and then the boiler may overheat. I quite often find this where maybe there's been a house with a lot of people in it and then they've all moved down so there's just one person and then the radiators have all been shut down in all the rooms just allowing a couple of radiators open. And then there's just not enough flow for the boiler to operate and then the boiler overheats. This is the same with thermostatic valves. I quite often find a house maybe with every radiator has a thermostatic valve. Now, if you have these turned down, then at some point there's a possibility that every radiator will be shut because the thermostat would have turned the radiator off. This will completely stop the water from flowing around the system. And so your boiler will straight away overheat and pop out that thermostat. It's always recommended to have one radiator, which is a bypass with just two lock shields on, like in a bathroom or a hallway. Just thought I'd mention, if you're wondering why these radiators are gray and sparkly, that's because I sprayed them with a special paint. And if you fancy having that, then you can watch my video all about how to do that. 
Another thing to check is the pump, because if the pump is not pumping hard enough, then it will not get the water to flow through the heat exchanger fast enough. But I need to be careful adjusting the pump speed because this can open up a whole nother bag of worms with something called pump over and sucking air into the system. That's for another video altogether. It could be a control fault like this zone valve not opening up correctly or being wired in incorrectly. And with zone valves, you should have an auto bypass and maybe that auto bypass has stopped working. Or there could be a blockage like this piece of pipe here, which I cut out is completely blocked with black magnetite. And I really have to push hard to get this drill to go through this bit of pipe and clean out that bit of magnetite. Obviously this bit of pipe is scrap now. Blockages can be anywhere on old systems, like in this pump here. You can see how every vein is completely blocked with magnetite. And here it is after I've cleaned it out. You can see how that looks completely different now and every vein is completely clear and the water is going to flow through there with no trouble at all now. Then there is the main heat exchanger itself. Now this is one I took out of an old boiler and I decided to cut it in half as you can see to show you what's inside these heat exchangers. And you can see it's just loads and loads of pipes which are squashed together and those waterways are very thin and you can see how it doesn't take a lot to block them up. You can see how that one there is completely blocked. Once these main heat exchangers become blocked, there's not a lot I can do. I can try cleaning them out with chemicals, but I've not always found that to be very successful. So then it's either replace the main heat exchanger or replace the boiler altogether. And finally, one of the last things I would do is adjust the power of the boiler. Now it says on this data badge, the boiler has a maximum output of 18.57 kilowatts and a minimum output of 4.95 kilowatts. Now that is a big difference in power and the boiler quite happily operates in between these ranges. Just to explain it in layman's terms, consider putting a pan of water onto a hob. The temperature can then be adjusted from either high right down to low. The difference this makes is how long it takes for your pan of water to boil. Turned up high, the pan of water is going to boil quickly and will not be that efficient. Turned down to medium and the pan's going to take a bit longer to boil, but it's still going to get there and it's going to be more efficient. Turn a hob down too low and your pan's never going to come to the boil. Now I'm going to do exactly the same with this boiler and this is called range rating. And on this particular boiler, there is a special potentiometer for adjusting the output of the boiler. Once again, this can only be carried out by a gas registered engineer. So you can ask your engineer about doing this as it may considerably improve your boiler's operation and efficiency. Now there is nothing telling me where this potentiometer is set. If I turn the pointer fully round clockwise, it would then be in its minimum setting, which is just under five kilowatts. Now I have to add that adjusting this potentiometer is not written down in the book. And I did call the Glowum technical line just to confirm this. And they confirmed that it is not in the book. And also I asked them about the eco setting because you can see on that little diagram there is an eco there. Apparently this is for the boiler which is badged up as a British gas boiler. And I was told on this boiler that eco is the maximum. I will also add I was on the phone to them for 20 minutes because they could not find this information about what the eco actually did, if anything at all. But if you know any different, then leave it in the comments for everyone else to see. If I turn it fully around anti-clockwise, it would then be at its maximum setting, which was 18 kilowatts, which is going to be way too much power. And then the boiler will be kettling like crazy and probably overheat all the time. Now I'm going to do a little bit of trial and error with this boiler. I'm going to turn this potentiometer around about halfway. So that's going to make the boiler around about 10 kilowatts, which is probably a little undersized for this property, but it's better that she has some heat rather than no heat at all. Now I've finished setting that potentiometer. I could do a gas rate check to see exactly what I've set it to, but there's no need to do that because this is just a case of keeping the boiler operating. Because I know this boiler, this heat exchanger is completely scaled up. And basically she needs a new heat exchanger or a new boiler. But this will keep her limping along for a little bit longer to get her through the winter and into the summer when she can then change the boiler or heat exchanger. But I would probably recommend as this is an older boiler now just to change the boiler and update the controls. Now it's also worth mentioning this lady hasn't got a magnetic filter. So is this a possibility I could put a magnetic filter on the system, put some cleaner through it, and then the whole system might come back to life and then she'd have a much better system. Again, I've tried this in the past and it does work to a certain degree, but it will never be as good as new. 
but it is well worth putting a magnetic filter on your system and then adding some chemicals to the system because I have had some really great results by doing this. You can see how this MagnaClean is covered in bits of black magnetite, which has come out of the system. And this black magnetite is incredibly bad for your whole system. And in this photo, you can see that pile of black magnetite which I've taken off the filter. That's what's blocking the heat exchanger on this boiler. And of course, you can watch my video all about magnetic filters. One last thing to mention is the thermostat on the front of the boiler. Now, if I go back to the scenario of the pan of water on your hob, the thermostat on the front of the boiler is the setting of how hot your pan of water will get. If you don't have a hot water tank and your boiler is only running your central heating, then you could turn the thermostat right down as low as you could possibly make it and still keep your house warm. But if you've got hot water, you should be setting this to around about 60 to 65 degrees. And that way it will heat up your hot water and kill any bugs or diseases which can come from stored hot water and loft tanks. Now you can see I've turned this dial round to around about the three o'clock position and the boiler's temperature is still rising and it's gradually getting to that temperature. But I can make a few more changes and just adjust that down a little bit and that'll keep the boiler running at its optimal setting and hopefully keep it going without tripping out. But for this boiler, it's all up and running again and a fingers crossed it's gonna keep on running and it's not gonna trip out again. Of course, there is no guarantee with this because there could also be other faults on the system and the heat exchanger still has poor flow through it. So if you have got this F5 fault, hopefully you know a little bit more about it and call that gas registered engineer to come and help you out with this problem. As you can see, it is not as straightforward as just resetting a thermostat. And finally, to find a gas registered engineer, I've left a link in the description, which will take you to the gas register where you can find a genuine local gas safe registered engineer. Right, that's about it then. So I do hope my video has been helpful to you. If you wanna watch my next video, then you can click on the link just here. And if you found my video helpful in any way, then please give me that little bit of feedback by clicking on that thumbs up. And like I said, that will help others to find your video. And if you enjoyed the video, then you can click on subscribe. And if you wanna receive a notification the next time I upload a help video, then click on that bell. And of course, share the video with your friends. And if you want to buy me a cup of coffee, I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's left a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it helped me to make more videos, which will hopefully help you. Bye for now, and I'll see you next time.